Well, hey guys, in today's video, I wanted to warn you that ironically, I have a very large glob of sunscreen like right here on my nose. So I don't know, let's all collectively laugh right now together. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> what can I say? Um, I hope you all enjoy the video. Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna tell you about products that are on the market that destroy people's skin. And in my opinion, should be taken off the market permanently. What are these products? They are products that frequently are labeled tanning lotions, bronzing lotions, browning lotions with sunscreen. Oh, what? She's saying a sunscreen should be taken off the market. What has happened to her? Oh my goodness, the sunscreen queen is losing it. No, you guys, these are horrible products. All right, I will put throughout this video some images of some of these products to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, but Banana Boat makes one, I think. Um, Australian Gold, I believe, makes several. Um, I wanna say that Maui Babe makes one. Anyways, these are products that are marketed to people who wanna go outside and tan but not burn and they have a little bit of low level SPF in them to allow the user to stay outdoors for a long time to achieve a tan without getting a burn. And how is it that they do this? Well, the sunscreens have a very low SPF and they often have little to no UVA protection in the product. So they're really only giving you a little bit of protection against the burning rays, allowing you to stay outside longer and not burn so that you can get a tan. Why is this so dangerous? It's dangerous because a sun-induced or a tanning bed-induced, God forbid, tan is not safe and reflects skin injury. Tanning is largely mediated by UVA. UVA is the part of the sun, actually a big, big chunk of the sun, that not only hits our skin when we're outside, but also comes through the window. And UVA activates enzymes in our skin called matrix metalloproteinases that degrade the collagen in our skin, leading to the formation of wrinkles down the road. They are what are responsible for photoaging, what is gonna make you look old and haggard prematurely. UVA rays that tan our skin also lead to skin thickening. As part of the tanning response, your skin actually becomes thickened and leathery in an effort to, to block out some UV, but the end result is photo damage, you guys. I mean, it's a wounding response. Tanning is not safe. Unfortunately, tanning, which is largely mediated by UVA, is celebrated in our society. Yeah, we live in a society that celebrates having a tan and celebrates this quote, healthy glow. But I have to tell you guys, tanning is skin injury, period. There's no such thing as a safe tan. These products are dangerous because they promote the idea that you can safely tan. So that's very dangerous. It's especially dangerous to adolescents and teenagers who are more inclined, if you will, to seek social acceptance amongst their peers and are more likely to engage in tanning behaviors, which are reinforced by products like this. Now, while I never want anybody to have a sunburn, it, like a tan, is a type of serious skin injury. It is nothing to joke about or kid about, but I will say this, one, one potential positive, you might say, about a sunburn is that it gets people to come inside. And in the future, people will remember that painful experience of a burn and may be less likely to engage in tanning behaviors that can destroy their skin. But when you remove that burning aspect, what happens? People stay out longer. And in doing so, expose their skin to high doses of UVA, which is so dangerous to the health of our skin. I'll give you some historical context as to why these products are so dangerous. Many, many, many years ago, when sunscreens first came on the market, they did not have adequate UVA protection. They were basically very similar to these tanning products. And what we learned is that people put them on and because the products protected them from a burn, they stayed out longer than they ever would have had they not had the sunscreen on. So it encouraged excessive sun exposure. 
by preventing a burn, so to speak, and in the face of inadequate UVA protection as well. So that, that issue that happened many, many years ago, now in 2020, we have people who have skin cancer and we are seeing more and more and more skin cancers. It's the most common, it's the most common cancer, skin cancer. And a lot of criticism around sunscreen is like, well, we've got sunscreen and we had an increase in usage of sunscreen. Maybe it's causing the skin cancer. No, sunscreen didn't cause the skin cancer. It caused people to stay out in the sun too long and overexpose themselves to UVA in the face of inadequate UVA protection. Sunscreen alone is not enough. You have to seek other measures like wearing a hat, wearing sunglasses, an umbrella, and avoiding being outdoors for a prolonged period of time. If we don't do diligence in products to have good UVA protection, there's not gonna be a cognitive aspect to this for the consumer to, to appreciate until it is too late. What do I mean by that? Well, when we protect against a burn, consumer can appreciate the fact that the product is protecting their skin from the painful injury of burning. But when the product doesn't offer any protection against those UVA rays, there's really nothing cognitively to clue the consumer into that aspect of the sunscreen or sun protective product. And so it's, it's something that people are not gonna be aware of. Why does that matter? Well, because when the product lacks that UVA, that UVA, blanket, then A, the consumer might stay out too long, as I said, and B, they're getting higher doses of UVA because some of the UVB is being filtered out and their, their skin is taking in more UVA. And as a result, they're getting more, more of those photo aging rays and those immune suppressive rays, those rays that set you up for skin cancer. But unfortunately, all of those outcomes don't appear until 10 or 20 years later. So these products are super dangerous for young people in particular. Why do I say young people? Again, they are just statistically more likely to engage in high risk behaviors, to not fully grasp uh, risks and appreciate delayed gratification and they're seeking, they're more likely to seek social acceptance. That doesn't mean that they're the only ones at risk, but it's specifically Fitzpatrick phototype three folks. And what do I mean by that? I'm gonna put a schematic here on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Basically the Fitzpatrick phototypes is a scale that basically gives a sense of how your skin responds to ultraviolet radiation. Fitzpatrick phototypes one and two, these are people who, they burn and so they have, they have a negative association with, with sun exposure and these products that offer low SPF, that's still not gonna be enough to protect them from a burn. When it comes to Fitzpatrick phototype five and six, their skin does not burn at baseline. So in general, I find that products that are talking about burns and give that cognitive aspect of protecting you from the painful experience of a burn, they're kind of lost on those higher, higher phototypes who never burn and are like, okay, I don't need this. That's a major problem in and of itself because those groups don't use the good sunscreen because they feel as though they don't need it because they don't burn, but they do. Anyways. Coming back to the bad products. The bad products are particularly bad for these phototype three kids like myself because I'm somebody, as are people with phototype three, I can burn and I can tan. I can go both ways in terms of response to ultraviolet radiation. So a product like this will keep me from burning, it will allow me to tan, and it will give me social acceptance, and as a result, when I am in my later years, I will have more photo damage, I'll have more skin cancers, etc. The type of people who will tell you, oh, you know, I get, I get a burn here and there, but it turns into a tan, it doesn't turn into a tan. Uh, you basically have burning is a type of skin injury and tanning is a type of skin injury. And people who say that, oh, I burn a few times and then I tan, um, it's like two different versions of wounding of the skin. And so these are people who seek a tan and end up exposing themselves to way too much skin injury. And you know, it's, it's a serious problem. And these products that only protect against a little bit of UVB, just enough 
just enough to block that painful experience of a burn, um, they, they open up, up those people to the tanning rays that are so, so dangerous, so dangerous. So that is, that's why these products are bad and need to be taken off the market and replaced exclusively with sunscreens that not only will protect you reliably against a burn, but also will protect you against UVA. Another reason this is a major problem, these products are a major problem is that a lot of them have fragrance in them and fragrance is sensitizing, meaning it can, it can make you more likely to develop an allergy to ingredients and products. But when you take those, those fragrance ingredients and you expose them to UVA, they become even more likely to cause photo, or become what are called photoallergens, essentially. The UV changes the way they look and they become more sensitizing. So that's another problem. What I want you guys to appreciate from this video is the fact that getting a sunburn is bad, but it's not the only type of skin injury. A tan is a type of skin injury, and both a tan and a burn are two types of skin injury that put you at risk for premature photoaging, suppress the immune system in your skin, and contribute to skin cancer formation. And what, regardless of your Fitzpatrick phototype, whether you are one or six, you need to wear a broad spectrum sunscreen to protect yourself from these rays. And a sunscreen that just gives you a little bit of protection against burning is not enough, and those should be taken off the market. They're dangerous. And when I speak about the negative aspects of UVA, I want you guys to understand that ultraviolet radiation, it's on a spectrum. UVB and UVA, they work together in kind of a fluid manner to damage your skin and to contribute to photo aging. But it's important for you guys to be aware that there are two, two types of UV that are affecting your skin mostly. And it's also UVA, not UVB, that is responsible for a lot of photosensitive diseases um, and many medications that you might take, including just over-the-counter pain relievers, they make your skin more sensitive to those UVA rays. UVA, not only does it contribute to this agent, to aging and to skin cancer, but it also is a major driving factor for what's called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, an aspect of photoaging that is more, more so for Fitzpatrick's phototypes four, five, and six higher phototypes. You need to be aware of UVA. I hope this video was helpful to you guys in clarifying there's no such thing as a safe tan. Uh, tanning and burning, they're both types of skin injury, and these products, they have to go. They have to go, they're very dangerous. If you have a teenager at home, please caution them against these. And uh, If they are motivated to tan and not, not appreciating the aspect of delayed gratification and what can happen to them down the road, I encourage you to download an app. No, this is not sponsored. It's called Sunface and it will show your teenager what their skin looks like now and what it will look like in 10, 15 years if they don't protect their skin from the sun and what it will look like 10, 15 years down the road if they tan just once a week. And I'm telling you guys about this because it was recently shown in, a, in some studies to be an effective tool for motivating young people to use sunscreen and sun protective behaviors. So I'll list that down below. Again, it's not sponsored, but anything that can help young people protect their skin from the sun, it's gonna pay off dividends for everybody because it hopefully can help in lowering the burden of skin cancers uh, that are cropping up down the road. And unlike a sunburn, a skin cancer, it doesn't show up right away. It doesn't show up for about 15, 20 years. For a teenager, pfft, they don't always grasp that. So I hope if you have a teenager, show them this tool because it has been shown to be effective at motivating them towards more sun protective behaviors that can help them. Stay away from these products though. Um, and hopefully you guys learned something today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.